In Ephesians 5.25, we read, Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. To build the church, we have to have the same spirit. We have to love the church and be willing to give ourselves, not just our money or our time, but ourselves, our self-life first of all. When God wanted to describe his love to man, he could compare his love with only one earthly example, the love of a mother for her newborn child. See Isaiah 49 verse 15 where it says, Can a mother forget her nursing child? Even she may forget, but I will not forget you. So if you observe a mother, you'll see that her love for a baby is full of the spirit of sacrifice. From early morning to late at night, and right through the night, a mother sacrifices and sacrifices and sacrifices for her baby. And she gets nothing in return. She endures pain and inconvenience year after year for her child. And she does it joyfully, expecting nothing in return. That's how God loves us too. And that's the nature he wants to impart to us. But it's impossible to find a fellowship anywhere in the world about which it can be honestly said that they all want, love one another like that. And yet that's how we are supposed to love one another in the church. Jesus said, all men will know you are my disciples when you love one another as I have loved you. Most believers know only how to love those who agree with them and who join their group. Their love is human and it's far removed from the sacrificial love of mothers. Yet divine love is the goal towards which should be, we should be striving. And when we recognize that our love is not like that, what do we do? Sit back and do nothing? I hope not. We must confess our hope and cry out to God that he will give us through the Holy Spirit that love in our hearts for his church. Christ loved the church and gave himself. And we must love the people in the church and give ourselves. And pray that our love will become like Christ one day. If you think of a mother, you see, she doesn't care whether others around her are sacrificing anything for their child or not. No. She keeps on sacrificing herself every day, irrespective of what others around are doing. In the same way, one who has seen the church as his own baby will never be bothered whether others around him in the church are sacrificing anything for the church. He will still sacrifice himself joyfully and he'll have no complaint or demand against anyone else. Those who complain that others are not sacrificing for the sake of the church are not mothers. They are hired nurses. Such nurses, you know, in a hospital have fixed working hours and they'll complain if the next nurse does not come by the time her eight hour shift is over. But what about a mother? Do you think she has eight hour shifts? Not at all. She has a 24 hour shift every single day, year after year. And she doesn't even get paid for it. Even when her child is 20 years old, the mother's work is not over. Think of a little baby. Only mothers can have milk. For their babies. Nurses can never produce milk for the babies they care for in a hospital. In the same way in a church, those who have that spirit of a mother will always have a word from God, the milk of God's word for their spiritual children in every single meeting, just like a mother always has milk for her baby. Many elders in many churches do not have a word for the people in that church. You know why? Listen, because they are nurses, not mothers. Another thing about a mother, she doesn't expect any payment from her children. No child ever pays his mother for her service. Think of a wages a mother should be paid if you had to pay her. 
at the rate that's paid to nurses. Let's say a nurse is paid $20 an hour. And here's this nurse working 24 hours a day, 365 days in a year. What do you think the mother owes? What do you think the child owes the mother? By the time that child is about 20 years old, he will owe the mother maybe 20, 30, 40 million dollars. Who can ever pay, repay such a debt? Now the question that comes to us is, who is willing to work for the Lord like that? Without receiving any payment, like those mothers, but giving oneself day after day, year after year, until the day Jesus returns for his church. If God can find one person like that, with that spirit, that does not work for pay, that's willing to have seek God for the milk of his word for his people every day. If God can find one person like that, he will use that person much more than 10,000 half-hearted believers who do not have the spirit of sacrifice. When Jesus returns to earth and you stand before him and you look back over your life, will you have any regrets over the way you lived? And the way you served this church? Or will you be able to look back over a life that is spent usefully for the kingdom of God? So many are drifting along and wasting their lives on earth. Let me urge you, my brothers and sisters, wake up before it is too late. Say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, my Lord, who loved the church and gave himself completely for her, for the church, expecting nothing in return. Ask God to show you this way, the way of sacrifice. He who has ears to hear, let him hear.